Wedding the 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 wedding well, hello, and thank you so much for tuning in to Weddings-ish with Jove, a podcast all about love, joy, and weddings-ish with a special guest each episode. I couldn't be more excited to be joined in studio with Randy Finoli, bridal <laughs> designer and TV star from Say Yes to the Dress, and just an overall incredible human. How are you, thank Randy? You. I am great. How are I you, Jove? <laughs> I am well. I'm so happy that we are here. Thank you sure. are just such a beacon of brightness and joy, and I have thank so you. many questions for you. Oh, I'm ready. Let's <laughs> <So> do it. <laughs> I understand you're born on a farm. Oh, God. I just don't look at you and think farm. <laughs> you know what? All I have to say is, what were they thinking? <laughs> really? I mean, do I look like a farm boy? No. It was, it was, it was yeah, 163 acres. Okay. 100 head of cattle. I was the last of seven children, the last of six boys, so lots of hand-me-downs. Wow. So that's one of the things that I think propelled me to um, fashion. But yeah, and I ran away five times. I had a rough childhood. Now, now here's the thing. My my parents weren't farmers. Okay. My father was actually um, a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force. Oh, wow. Military. Retired and um, retired by the time I was born. And my mother was a nurse. Okay. And so they just kind of retired on the farm from their grandparents that I had given to them. I see. So it's a them. family farm. Yeah. And, but in Southern Illinois, like in the middle of nowhere. Literally nowhere. Like, nothing. like acres and acres and acres. 163. So when you ran away, where did you go? Uh, anywhere I could. <laughs> um, I started running away. I started at five and finally okay. at 16, they let me go. I had a very, um, a lot of people don't know this and I didn't really talk about it for a long time mm -hmm. until one day I was up on stage. I do a lot of um, uh, appearances at bridal shows and sure. whatnot. And I, I talk, kind of talk about my life story and everything. And and one day it just kind of slipped out about mm. me being abused by my father. Mm. And then afterwards at the reception line, when I did my meet and greet, I had like 10 people say, oh my gosh, thank you for sharing that with me because I went through they that. Also... And I realized that it was therapeutic for people and it helped yeah. them and, and they wanted to hear about it. So now I talk very openly about it. Mm. My father was very abusive to me. I was pretty much his punching bag. Of all of the children. Of you all the were children. I was really the, the one, one he hated the most. And, I, and maybe it's because I was effeminate and I was very small as you know, I wasn't and he Petite. was he was like a professional boxer and a yeah. big guy, like, you know. Um, so yeah, so finally at the age of um 16, my brother and sister-in-law had moved to Louisiana and she had just had her second child. And they said, you know, can you come down and help us with the baby and mm. mowing the lawn and cleaning the pool and yeah. all that? So I came down for the summer and then the fall came around. They said, we really could love to keep you. Longer. You want to go to school here? And I'm like, yeah. hell yeah. Was this Anything. a parachute from them? Did they know about the abuse or you were? Oh, no, no. Nobody oh, knew. everybody knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody knew. My, 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 my brothers, yeah. Some yeah. of them tried to, you know, to protect help. me. Yeah. My mother did her best. Sure. You know. Um, he was just crazy, you know, it, it's, I kind of laugh about it now and I, I probably shouldn't, mm. you know, maybe it's a self, you know, um, defense mechanism. Of course. I don't know. Um, I do know that there is some damage. Like I, I will say this, like trust yeah. is a huge thing with me. Of if course. You, if, if I lose your trust. That's it. You can't get it back. Yeah. I, if you, if you lie to me once or you break my trust, I just, I can't, yeah. I can't never trust you But again. that makes perfect sense based yeah. on your experience and just in yeah. general. Trust yeah. is earned and once. It's broken. It's, you don't burn it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. So from the farm, you mm -hmm. then moved to, in with your sister? Sister, um, sister-in-law sister and brother in -law. Okay. down in Louisiana. And yeah. I finished my last two years of high school okay. there, which is really great because I'm the new kid in school. Yeah. And we were just far enough um, away from the school where the bus didn't go. So I had to drive. So now I'm a cool kid with a car. I didn't really know it at the time. You know, you never really know these things till afterwards. Yeah. But yeah, I was in every single club that they had. Like Overachiever before, over before here. Before I was like a, a C and D student. Yeah. Now I'm like, I was You're on the excelling. honor roll every yeah. single semester and straight A's and and won lots of awards and uh, speech club and beta club and drama and, like and all of it. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, you name a club, I was in it. Did you win something in the yearbook, like most likely to succeed, oh, uh, or like oh, you know all those awards that you get? Well, they in the listed yearbook. all the clubs I was in. Uh -huh. I'm like, wow, is there anything I wasn't in? <laughs> you were very busy, you know? but nothing athletic. <laughs> I wasn't in anything athletic, that's for sure. <laughs> you drew the line there. Yeah. And then from high school, where did you go? Where did life so take you? Then I, um, of course, you got to go to college, right? So I went to LSU okay. for one semester, had no major. And I'm like, okay, but this is really a waste of time. Yeah. So I quit. And um, so then I was just working in a restaurant for a while. And then um, my family, 
my brother found out. They wanted to get me back home. Mm-hmm. And my brother kept trying to get me back home. And finally he cornered me one night and I was like, what's going on? I know yeah. it. I know it. I know it. I'm like, what do you know? And he said, just say it. And I'm like, okay, I'm gay. Was mm. you know, and um, I. By the way, I did not know till like Later last in life. few last few months of my high school year. Really? So you you yeah. didn't have crushes as uh, in high school? You know, I didn't. I had three girlfriends. Okay, I was dating like honestly the the night that I went to my first night at the gay bar, I was actually like in a relationship, kind of whatever with or, a girl. I had three different girls. Yeah. Oh, you were a player. Randy well, was a player. A <laughs> well, yeah, I had the girls in my town and the girls in my school, and then this other girl that whatever. And yeah, so I but they all kind of stood me up this one weekend, and I'm like, well, I'm just gonna go out by myself. So I went out uh-huh. to this one bar, and nobody really talked to me, and I'm like, then I got really drunk, and I'm like, I'm gonna go to a gay bar. I didn't even know what okay. that meant. Yeah. And I walked in, and actually, um. The first person I met was, I saw this really gorgeous guy. And I was raised that, you know, gay people were these old, yeah. sleazy, gross things that yeah. hid in alleys and preyed on children. Yeah, nothing and glorious I, about being no. gay. No, and I yeah. walked in and there's this gorgeous guy. And I'm like, he can't be gay. He's too handsome. And he walked over and I'm like, are you gay? And he goes, totally. And then he, he was, was nice to you. So you were was even actually, more shocked. Well, he was actually Mr. Gay Louisiana. And oh. we started dating that night. <laughs> that, that, was, night. I was like, that night. That night. You said goodbye to your three girlfriends. That night. Now I have like a six month <laughs> rule. But yeah. And um, yeah, his name was Chaz. So it was kind of one of those androgynous names. Chaz. C-H- C-H-A-Z. So uh-huh. I'm like, yeah, it's short for Charlie or whatever, you know, as a girl. So, but anyway, so um, they, um, oh, I've got so many good stories that we're going to run out of time. But so they came with a U-Haul and they moved me from Baton Rouge back to their home. In, oh, so Chaz did, not your family. No, no, my family came with, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm talking. We're jumping around. Yeah, jumping around. I do that a lot. You got to keep me focused. No, I'm, I'm here for you. So when my brother found out that I was gay, they came with a U-Haul and said, we're moving you back home. Because they were not okay with this. was and, not, Oh my God. Especially so military father. He called apparently everyone in my family mm-hmm. and my mother flew down from Illinois. Which she wouldn't spend a dime. I, I love my mother. She passed away, but very thrifty so with sorry. seven kids yep. and whatever. And she would not, I mean, she would never spend a dime on a, on a flight. Yeah. And she flew down. And I remember standing there and there were five of them mm. saying, you know, you need therapy. You need to see a psychiatrist, yeah. you know, because you had a horrible childhood and you just need some stability. You need to talk this what out. What year blah, blah, blah. is this? This is 19... 19- like 83 probably. So just before the AIDS crisis oh, and while it's it was, illegal to be gay in the country, it's it was, still a very tumultuous time. It's the bad South, today. But the South. Yeah. In like, we were in yeah. Winfield, Louisiana. Um, They took me to, so there was five of them and I said, okay, there's five of you. There's one of me. You're telling me I'm crazy. Maybe I am. So yeah. I'll go. And you're my family. You know? So I believe you. Yeah. Well, I didn't really know that. <laughs> but, but I just said, you know, I'll go. I don't care. It was like, oh, I get attention. I get to sit an hour and talk. I'd love to talk, you know? <laughs> So they took me to Alexandria, which was, you know, the big city. And they took me to this psychiatrist and it, uh, you'll, this little kind of frail guy and with a, a white beard and white hair and these little beady glasses. Uh-huh. And I'm sitting there and I'm just yak, yak, yak. Yeah, yeah. For the hour, I'm just yak, yak, yak. Chatty Cathy over here. Of course. And, and get me to shut up is the hard part. <laughs> so then at the end, I said, well, so what do you think, doc? And he goes, <laughs> what do you mean? I said, well, what's wrong with me? And he goes, there's nothing wrong with you. Mm. He said, you're really intelligent. Mm. And he said, you seem to be pretty well adjusted. He said, I don't see a reason for you to come back, although they could use a session or two. Wow. And it was like Whoa. five points for Randy, zero for them. Wow. They never took me back. I wanted to go back. Oh I was my. having a good time. <laughs> you enjoyed the attention. <laughs> yeah. So they so they said, well, we're just going to keep you here because you need a home a stable life and blah, blah, yeah. blah. And, and they had a five bedroom house and five bathrooms and an indoor swimming pool and, and whatever. And family knows best. And, and, and you know, and my, my sister-in-law cooked and she was wonderful. And we were best friends. And, you know, so a couple months would go by and I'm like, well, can I go out? Well, where are you going to go? Oh, well, the gay bar. Yeah. No, you can't go out. So this went on. And finally, after about six months, I said, you know, at some point, you're going to let me out. Said, By the yeah. way, I love living here. Yeah. I don't pay rent. You yeah. do my laundry. You cook for I me. eat three meals a it's day. It's fabulous. I swim in the pool. I lounge and watch TV. Yeah. Like, I could do this the rest of my life. Yeah. I said, but at some point, you're going to get tired of me living off you, yep. you know, and paying for everything. And you're going to let me go out. And guess where I'm going to go? To a gay bar. To a gay bar. To be myself. Whether to it's find now love, or 20 years find, from now. Yes, like, it's going to happen. But, it, but it, was never, it was never, and it has never been an issue of my life. I, I don't even like think about it. So it's kind of weird for me to talk about being gay because I don't really talk about it. Because sure. it just is something that 
I don't even think about. It's, it's who you are, but it's not what you are. Yeah, it, it's, I don't even know. I don't, it's just something that uh, is private that maybe happens in my bedroom. Never, yeah. but uh, <laughs> not very often. <laughs> I work with women all day. Come yeah. on. But, um, they have yeah. gay brothers. <laughs> Occasionally one will come in a salon, yeah, but I'm sure, yeah, but, but you've got to keep it professional. Yeah, exactly. So, so you moved out from your family, you moved out from your sister-in-law's house. Yeah, so so then I went to school and um, beauty school and became um, okay. a hairdresser and a makeup artist. I didn't know you were a hairdresser. And a makeup artist, yes. How do I look? I cut my I cut my own hair to this you day. You great. Do you do Thank your you. own, do you do I your do own beat? I do everything. Wow. Everything. She's self-sufficient. And um, yeah, and and um, so uh, um, yeah, I, I did hair and makeup. And then I went to this drag show one night at the local bar and okay. there was this entertainer and she had on these beautiful turquoise pumps. So afterwards I said, I went backstage and said, those were the most gorgeous pumps. She said, oh, you are a cute little boy. We're having a contest here in about a month. It was called the Theater Lounge. Okay. And we're going to have a Mr. and Miss Theater. She goes, you should enter the Mr. And I'm like, okay. okay. Well, I, look at me. I, no I can muscles. do theater. So I'm yeah. like, so I'm trying to lift weights and get a tan. <laughs> to it's be not going to happen. Not going to happen in a month. So Got she it. said, oh, we'll just paint your face and you can enter the Miss. So they came to my apartment one night. It was a Sunday. We had nothing going on. I'm bored. I said, what do you think about coming over and painting me? Yeah. Put me in drag. And she painted my face. And then my drag sister, if you guys don't know what that is, look it up. But well, this is your drag mother. The yeah. One in the and then, then she had another child. It was my drag sister. Uh -huh. So we all took on the last name Alexander. Okay. He was the one that, for whoever put you in makeup first. Is your is mother. Your is your drag mother, if you don't yeah. know that. Yeah. So I became Brandy Alexander, which okay. is a cocktail. So I, you know, with an eye though. <laughs> with an eye. But anyway, so her first daughter's standing there. And, and so she painted my face and then she pinned this strawberry blonde wig on me and said, okay, now I'm going to pin it in the back and now you're going to throw your head back and shake your head. And I did. And she was looking at me and she goes, bitch. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And I ran to the bathroom. I'm like, oh my God, I look awful. And they're like, are you kidding? You're gorgeous. You look gorgeous. You look so we, we got in the car and we drove around at T-Tops, took the T-Tops down, opened the windows. This was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh -huh. And I made, I saw nobody around. It was a Sunday night. Yeah. I made a left turn on Florida Boulevard. I get up to the light. Here pulls a police officer. No. <laughs> and you're down, in full drag. Full drag. With First your time drag ever. Mom? They're in the car with me. <laughs> All in drag. <laughs> well, they're not in drag. Okay, I'm in drag, but I am. Okay. And I'm sitting there and I'm, it's illegal. <laughs> you can, in, in those days, it was illegal. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm going to jail. You're I'm petrified. going to jail. Yeah. And I'm sitting there and he rolls down his window with the you know, electric thing and he goes, sweetheart, that left turn you just made was a big no-no. And I looked at him, I said, I'm sorry. And he goes, <laughs> You just be careful. And he gave me a wink. Honey, that light turned green and I floored it. As <laughs> fast as you could. My friend goes, now, bitch, do uh -huh. you feel real? Yeah, you're <laughs> passing with a police officer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. amazing. So I, I, and I, then, so the pageant came up. I entered the Miss Theater Lounge. Yeah. I was first runner up and Miss Congeniality won more money than I was making all week doing hair. So, so you said, did two competitions but didn't win the first two. Miss, but, you won Miss Congeniality. Oh, you won Miss Congeniality. No, I got Miss Congeniality and I was first runner up. In your very first competition Very ever. first competition, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And um, because I'm a nice person. Like, oh, no. Of course. But, um, so, I, and I won all this money. And I'm like, I made more in one night than I did yeah. a whole week doing hair. Yeah. And it was a lot more fun. Of course. So, I started sewing actually when I was nine years old. Okay. My, on a farm, what else are you going to do? And my, my mother bought a sewing machine. Yeah. She put it in my room because, you know, where else? She's going to put it in her bedroom. So she put it in my bedroom and said, you know, and, and she tried to sew. She my could. mother could not put a hem in a terry cloth <laughs> towel to save her life. And I would watch her and I'm like, I don't get it. Like you put your foot on the pedal. Yeah, and like for you, it, it, just was, goes. it was, yeah. I did, it just made complete sense. So she told me, do not touch my good sewing machine. Do not touch my good fabric. Do not touch my good scissors. Yeah. Every mother has their good scissors. She went to work one day and she was a home health nurse. So she had to wear like blue and white. And I had a crush on Marlo Thomas okay. at that time, that girl, look her up. A lot of people <laughs> don't know who she is. Um, and I, there was a McCall's pattern with Marlo Thomas on the front. We had a 10 foot table cause you know, yep. seven kids. So I laid out the fabric, pinned down the pattern, cut it out, sewed it up, ironed it. You're nine years old? Nine years old. First time wow. I touched a sewing machine. Hung it up in the door frame, cleaned up my mess. She came home from work and she's like, where did this dress come from? I said, I made it. Scared because you weren't supposed to touch I it. I thought I was going to get yeah, in trouble. Yeah, yeah. She went to her room, put it on. She came and she goes, oh my God, this is beautiful. Wow. And she wore it to work the next day. Uh-huh. And she told everybody, my son made this. My nine-year-old son made this. Then she came the day after that and said, could you make me this skirt? 
For her or for someone for else? For her. Okay. And I was like, hallelujah, get me out of the fields, <laughs> away from those damn cows yes. that tormented my childhood. Yes, I'm sure. The so mooing and the- That's how I actually started. That's how you began. And then when I did female impersonation, I made everything All that I costumes. wore, basically. So yeah. your first line was your mother's clothing. It was. And your second <laughs> was your drag clothing. And, and for- 10 years. Yeah, I did all yeah, 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 I did female impersonation. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I didn't call it drag. Um, because the, I was in the Miss America, Miss Gay America pageant, okay. and we call it female impersonation, which, okay. and a lot of people don't know this, but drag is kind of like theatrical. It's like very bigger. theatrical, big so hair, this is big more lashes. Subtle. We had to look like real women with Got no it. augmentation, okay. no hormones, no silicone, nothing. We had male interview in a business suit. Oh, wow. We had group discussion, which was on a political topic yes. we, because we had, or some newsworthy topic. Yep. So we had to be aware of current events. Yep. We had on stage female interview. We had talent. We had sportswear. We had presentation. There were like six categories. And oh, so this is not drag. Yeah, this no, is, this, this is, is, and it's amazing. Major, this was the number one pageant in the country wow. at that time, Miss okay. Gay America. It's still going on to this day. Is it? I was number 18. Yeah, it's on its 53rd year, I think wow. now. That's so cool. I was Miss Gay America in 1990. Okay. I won in 89, but you know, it's 89, the contest in for October. 90. For 90. And um, yeah, well, the first year I went, I got my um um my talent was too long. So they took off. Meaning like you it's supposed to be too seven long, minutes. And you perform I never, for like I never, 10? I never, it was eight, and eight minutes, 15 seconds. Okay. I never timed it. <laughs> and I won talent the preliminary night. What was your talent? It was um, Dorothy from the Wizard of Oz. Uh, first I did Home. Okay. And then the curtains open and there's the scarecrow and yep. we did Ease on Down the Road. And, okay. you know, he flipped me on his shoulder and flipped me around and like dipped me and we did. choreography. Oh, it, oh, I was a dancer. Wow. Three and Shields. It's so pretty a spectacular. a dancer, yeah, a yeah, yeah. seamstress, a designer, yeah. hair and makeup. I mean, just all the of whole it. Package. Okay. And so my talent, so I won talent preliminary night. And then the final night, somebody said her talent was too long, whatever. So they I lost. disqualified you. So they, I lost 300 points. So I was fourth runner up. Oh, no. Yeah. Then they put a new rule in the rule book. So the next year I came back and I won talent the first night, okay. preliminary night. I made the top 10. Then Judy Jetson from Kentucky, <laughs> Lexington, Kentucky, <laughs> drag, female drag queen. I'm going to call her. Anyway, she went and unhooked my props. I did doll on a music box from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. She into, unhooked your props? Into the music in the mirror. And I had like 16 mirrors that were eight foot tall on yeah. a box that with a motor that rotated in these two huge doors that were eight foot tall, four And you had to wide. build all of that. Oh, I built it all and, and had people made it and put it together. And and in the hooks in the back, because we had to transport it, get it there. Final night, she unhooks it. So when the doors were open out on this Dallas convention center, no. the door fell. And I'm sitting there and I haven't been wound up yet, so I'm not alive. And I'm like, Oh God, there you? goes there goes my prop. I didn't see it till I got to that point. I'm like, oh, so I lost, I got first runner up and I, by about 16 points. And so the third year I went back and I said, I'll be back next year. And I'm going to win it. With no props, no backup dancers, and with a talent under seven minutes. No way to be sabotaged. Nothing. And I went back and won every single category. Wow. And um, yeah, I won the title. And it was really actually good that I didn't win those first two years mm. because by the third year, everyone was like rooting for me. Yes. Like, come on. Yeah. Just give her the crown already. Yeah, she deserves you know? it. So, um, and I, I honestly, in my head, I was Miss America, even before they gave me the crown. Like yeah. I never cursed. I never drank. I didn't do drugs. I didn't party. Yeah. I was very professional. I walked in an outfit. I walked out in a different outfit. You took it very serious. I, yeah. it, was, it was a job. Yeah. And I took it seriously. Yeah. Yeah, I love, but those are some of the, probably the ten, happiest, of the, ten happy, years is a long those time. Those were fun years. They were fun. I have so many stories. We won't go into all of them. I we know. Have a lot more to I'm talk sure. about. Sure, that's like hours but and hours. I was pulled over by so many police officers, so many different times. As and you were I dressed as a woman. Never, uh, yes, and they I never, never had a ticket. You? Ne no, I never had a ticket. Well, one because of them, you were a woman. One of them came back up to my door and was knocking on it, and I'm like, <laughs> "Go away! I'm a man." He goes, "I don't care." I said, "You will in the morning." <laughs> my friends are like. You turned a, a man in uniform away. I'm like, I'm not having somebody in. You like to focus. You're a focused man. I don't do that. I was, that was my job. That yeah. was my profession. Yeah. I was, and actually we were, uh, as Miss America, I was on Sally, Jesse Raphael. Uh -huh. And I was on um, the news channel in Baton Rouge, the local for three nights. And I was on a show in Philadelphia, AM Philadelphia. And so I did a lot as yeah. Miss America. And, um, but when I was, in the pageant, the final night, we have onstage female interview. And I'm on the microphone and you talk a little brief biography. And yeah. I said, and someday I want to move to New York City and become a fashion designer and hopefully someday have my own company and be wow. on TV and this blah, blah, blah. This is 1990? This is 89, or yeah. 89, wow. And literally they're in the audience and they're like, 
bitch, have you seen yourself? Mm -hmm. You're never going to give this up. Yeah. They were laughing at me yeah. in the audience. I didn't know that. Oh, because you couldn't hear it. But uh, No, because, you know, you're, you're yeah. on stage and the lights and your thing, and, and they were like snickering because, mm. bitch, you're not going to give this yeah. up. Good luck. So, yeah, so I did my reign. I... Gave up everything, took a month off, and came to New York City in a U-Haul. I got an wow. apartment over the phone. Over the phone? Not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was how not, did you find it originally? I, well, I, I was up here for Sally Jesse Raphael. Uh -huh. I, I made friends with the producer. He was in one building. I'm like, I want an apartment. Well, then they had none available. They said, oh, we have this other building that you should get. Just well, when we moved them? in, there was a hole in the door where the, where the lock was supposed to go for the key. Yeah, and we didn't have electricity. They had to put an extension cord <laughs> through. It was, and it was one little tiny studio. And oh I my god! It was a mess. What neighborhood did you first um, come to? It was to? Um, Port Authority, like right, right oh, near okay. Port Authority. And back in like That's 1991, rough. it rough. was, yeah, I was here for a few months and yeah, I was jumped by five guys. <laughs> yeah, it was. And I got out of it. At that neighborhood, by five guys? Five guys grabbed me. And it was, it was, I was going to a movie, going to see, um, 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 Sons of the Lambs okay. of all movies. Uh -huh. and in Times my, Square, the it, big theater? It, I don't know. It was somewhere around Port yeah. Authority, wherever I was. And my hands were in my pockets and um, it was drizzling. These five guys came at me and they put their arm here and whipped me around. Said, do you have any effing money? Yeah. And I got right up in his face. I said, if I had any effing money, I'd have an effing umbrella. What? <laughs> and they said, shut the fuck up. It, check his pockets. I said, you idiot. I said, there's a cop standing right there. Yeah, and I don't and have any money. And they whipped around, and I took off running. Wow. There was no cop there. Wow. And Meryl Streep didn't so... win the Academy Award that year, okay? <laughs> Randy Finoli won. No, just kidding. No, but I don't know where I came up with that. Yeah. I don't know. I just, or how that just courage. Quick thinking. Yeah. But Your yeah. reaction was so quick. Yeah. So then in the, is that how you started fashion school? Is because yeah. you came FIT, to New York? FIT, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you said, yeah. I'm done with the stage. I'm going I'm to hone I my fashion. craft. I fashion. That was the, I mean, yeah. I, you know, I said there's three times in an entertainer's career, especially a female impersonator. Yeah. Who is she? There she is. And is she still around? You don't want to make I didn't want to be an 80-year-old drag queen. Yeah. You know, if you're yeah. the person or whatever, you yeah. know, no disrespect, RuPaul, no, but it wasn't for you. It wasn't. Yeah. yeah no, sorry. I don't mean no disrespect. <laughs> my drag mother's still performing. Of course. Yeah. Because for her, it's different. She'll yeah. never give it up. No. You're multi-talented. Yeah. You have other interests, well, I just, other passions. I just, yeah. And I had long hair. It was with my own hair. You had long hair? Uh, I'll show you pictures. Yeah. Yeah. You As a boy, I was like John Bon Jovi with the leather jacket like, and the ripped down jeans. Here? Oh, it was, it was, yeah, down oh, here. Oh, we need these pictures. Yeah, I'm going to show you. Wow. And, and everybody hated me because I had my own hair. So you didn't have wigs. And, no. And I, and I created all my costumes. I did all my choreography. And, you were thin and did all and my beautiful. makeup. Did my hair. You were the perfect they girl. They hated me. They hated me. Not, they didn't really hate me. They, they loved sure, me, but sure. I. Sure. Envy. Yeah. So then FIT and you decided fashion. Yeah. I, I only wanted to do evening wear. Okay. I didn't know anything about bridal because yeah. I'd never been to a wedding. Sure. We weren't allowed to get married back then. Yeah. So you who know, would so you? Yeah, I didn't know. All of your community was gay men and women at well, that time. I just, I'd never been to a wedding. None of my, sure. You know, as ring bearer when my older brother and older sister got sure. married, but I knew nothing about weddings. So there was a contest and it was for fourth semester to eighth semester students. Okay. And I was in my third semester. So I really wasn't, I was too you were young too to early. be. Yeah. <laughs> but the chairperson said, you know, look at this student. Like, he's straight A. He only wants to do evening wear. Overachiever. Like, he needs to, yeah, overachiever. We need to let him in this contest. Yes. So they allowed me to be in it. And we were supposed to design a mood board, a bridal design, and a bridesmaid. Okay. Well, I stayed home from Christmas because I'm like, I'm here to, I'm here to study fashion. I'm not here to do anything yeah. else. I would stay Very in the basement. Very Woods of you. I would stay in the basement all night long yeah. and work and yeah. drape and sketch and whatever. You were focused. Whatever they gave me, I would do it 10 times. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I did five mood boards, five bridal designs, and five bridesmaid designs. So way more than they even asked for. Just We had to just do one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the judges came in and they chose the top 10 and they chose all five of mine, not knowing it was the same student. So the chairperson said, you have to choose one of these and <laughs> yeah. go choose four others because this is all the same student. Because everyone was only doing one, but you did five. Oh my gosh. So Vivian Desi Diamond... Your memory, um, by the way, of these names from way back in the 80s, this is impeccable, your memory. Well, it's in the 90s now, but, but Vivian, it, it, you know, she just passed away recently, but she was the owner of Desi Creations Bridesmaids. Okay. And she was one of the judges, and she said, we got to get this kid. And so they called me on the payphone at FIT, and her husband <laughs> owned the Diamond Bridal Company. Mm. And they had like a stable of designers, like two at the time. And I think Bob Mackey even worked there for a short while. Oh, wow. Um, it was a little too theatrical. His stuff didn't really do sure. well. But anyway, but um, yeah, so I went in and they said, we want to hire you, give you 
your own name on the label. While you're in school still. I was still in school. I was in my my fourth semester. I had, it was like in January. And wow. I didn't graduate till like, you know, June or whatever. And so they hired me before I even graduated. Wow. So I graduated on uh, both companies. So I graduated on Friday, started to work on Monday. Four months later, I had 16 bridesmaids dresses going down one runway, 16 bridal gowns going down another. My goodness. I knew nothing. Now, the, the dress that won the contest... So I'm, I knew nothing about bridal. So I'm scouring the bridal magazines and I didn't see any halters. Mm. Well, so my dress that won the contest was, was a halter because I didn't know your shoulders were supposed to be covered for religious ceremony. Sure, to be a conservative. I didn't know that. And you said, were, set them free. And they loved it and it won. And then my very first collection, I also did boning on the outside of the wedding dress. Which is typically on the inside. Well, they were making fun of me again in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the design room the other designers they were laughing at me he doesn't know the boning sp he's just out of oh, school backwards. he doesn't know the boning is supposed to go on the uh -huh. inside and finally one of the seamstresses came and said you know the boning goes on the inside right and i said yes i'm doing this because i think it's visually beautiful beautiful yeah so i was the first american designer to, to do the halter and boning on the outside of a wedding dress wow my very first collection wow yeah. So people laughed at you in the pageants and you oh, won. Yeah. People laughed at you in your fashion and you've excelled. Just always thinking <laughs> outside the box. Keep, Keep laughing. laughing it's the fuel in your fire. I mean, you know, it's, it's just, but I never, here's the thing. I never really, I was always just focused. Like this. Laser focused. I, it was, it, I was crazed. Mm. I really was, I, I would literally sit there and bead my, for my, for my final night costume yeah. for the costume. It was all beaded. I would sit there for 18 hours. I would set my alarm clock for every three hours. I had every three hours. I had a 15 minute break where I could get something to drink, use the restroom and get back. <laughs> so disciplined. And I just had to get it done. Yeah. And beading takes a long time. So anyway, all I remember one morning is uh, I, the phone rang and I, I don't know who it was. And all I hear in my ears, Randy, Randy. Go get Joey. You're not making any sense. My, I had two roommates at the time, lived upstairs in the townhouse. And I, I was like just beating unconsciously. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I was always hyper focused. Hyper focused on doing and what you and set out to do. If you gave me a, something to do, I. You did it. I, I was the overachiever. Yeah. So uh, then yeah. how did you get from there to creative director at Kleinfeld? So, okay. So I was designing bridal uh, for about seven and a half years. Okay. Then came- Under your own collection, Randy yeah, Finoli. Randy Finoli for the Diamond Collection. Got it. And we were actually like probably almost number one. I, I won the Debbie Award, which is design excellence in the bridal industry two years in a row, 1999 okay. and 2000. Got it. Which back then was a really big, a big deal. Big deal, yeah. And um, so then 9-11 came mm. and I'm like, I need a break. I need to get out of here. Yeah. So- I just bought a condo and it had doubled in value. Uh, like Good for you. In like two years. Sure. So I said, let me cash out yep. and go back to Louisiana. But instead, I'll go to New Orleans. Mm. And apparently, you know, um, real estate is where the money is. Yep. You know, I just made a lot of money yeah, off yeah, yeah. this flip. So I bought two places in New Orleans, flipped them, bought another one pre um pre-construction. Became a real estate investor over here. Yeah. Okay. Well, and then I was buying the pay place in the back because I was opening up my own bridal shop. Got it. In and Louisiana. I had about, yeah. And I had about, uh, and I was just on the edge of the French Quarter. I, my, sure. my place overlooked the French Quarter. Beautiful. And a um, brand new, gorgeous building, but it kind of looks, you know, vintage, yeah. New Orleans ish. Yeah, yeah, the vibe. And um, so I was buying the place in the back. And two weeks before we signed the deal, and I was working with five brides already, Hurricane Katrina hit. No. So I had a lot of stuff in the ninth ward. It was wiped wow. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't even have the numbers for the brides. It, we weren't let wow. back for months and months and months. Yeah. And so then I, we moved back there and I got way into debt. Because we had, I had no income. And yeah. I, that's when I became a personal chef as well. I started cooking. You were a personal chef? Yes. For what can't you the do? Guy, <laughs> what can't, other than sports? Um, math, I, mean, <laughs> um, I can't read. <laughs> Stop. I, Stop. No, I, I've, written, I've written a book and I'm working yes. on another one right now. And I've got another one that I'm going to write. In your head, you know? yeah. Yeah, but when I say I can't read... Because my mind is always like this. Yeah. By the time I get to the bottom of the page, I have to reread it like five Again, times. you have to go back. Because I'm yeah, always yeah. thinking of what I'm doing next or where I'm going. Yeah, what you're flight. not present in the book. I can't be. I got so much going on. So I say, I can't read. Yeah. And it's just easier. <laughs> that's, that's your I one, really can. Like, that's I, your one. I, I got straight A's. I, got, I was on the honor roll. Like I, got, I graduated soon and come loudy. Okay. Yes, but, but, she can read. But, but I can read. But I, I hate to read. So you had a tr you had trouble in paradise with bridal and you yeah. became a personal chef. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And How I, did you fall into cooking? Well, the guy that built my condo, him and, he and his girlfriend, they were arguing one night about where they were going to go eat, what restaurant. And I said, why don't I just cook you dinner? And so I cooked them dinner. They came up and he goes, oh my God, this is the best and 
meal I've had. This is so healthy. It's so fresh. It's so good. I'll pay you if you'll cook for me. And I wow. said, wow, okay, I need the money. And you had no training except no, your no. own training. The I, training mean, I was of cooking life. since I was a child. Sure. Like, did you cook instance, with your mother, your sisters, your I, brothers? I cooked. Or just you? No, my mother had a full-time job and Got six it. other kids and 160-acre farm. Yeah. And it, she wasn't really present a lot. Like sure. one time she went out west to visit her eight siblings wow. and Ooh. Idaho and Washington State and California. And this is back before we were able to, even, I didn't even know how to use the long distance phone call back sure. then. Yeah. I was nine years old. Yeah, My father bought a piece of property a few hours away and took my brothers. He was gone. So you had to take care of yourself. They left me on the farm. I was about nine, 10 years old for two weeks with 100 head of cattle, 160 what? acres, without even a phone number to call this anymore. This is like Home Alone on steroids. This is, this is today weeks? they would call this child neglect yes. or abuse. You were the only was, one at the house. There was no one but me by myself. So I, wow. but I did, I was doing laundry at five. I was cooking. I was yeah. sewing. Making, you were I was fun. making meal. I was, I made Thanksgiving dinner once because my mother, she started it, but then she had to work. And I remember calling her on the phone saying, how do you make mashed potatoes? And we were Italian. Through. We only, you know, we only did pasta. So I'd never made mashed <laughs> potatoes. So anyway, I digress. So where are we now? You're private chefing for your real yeah, estate yeah. agent. So finally I'm like, you know, we're paying mortgage and car payments and everything else. And I'm like, we got in way into debt. Yeah. I'm like, I need money. So I put my resume out and Kleinfeld said, you know what? You do hair, you do makeup, you were a designer, you work with brides. You had a line, you got the awards. You know, you work with brides. You used to come here and do crack, you know, like just, we we did 93 dresses one time during a trunk show. So we like broke yeah. all rec records because yeah. I, I always have a dress for a bride and I yep. do the hair and the veil and everything anyway. But had you sold at Kleinfeld before that or no? Because well, you were my the other. My first trunk show was at Kleinfeld. Oh, okay. and, and the contest I entered, it was Kleinfeld Modern Bride Magazine in FIT. Oh, so gotcha. I had known about Kleinfeld from the beginning. They were in the back of your mind. Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, they said, we just, and we'll just make up a title. We'll just call you fashion director. And okay. you can just float around and help the consultants. Great. So the first day I started was the last day they were filming season one of Say Yes to the Dress. Yes. The iconic show. And then the first season came out. Oh, my God. Have you seen it? <laughs> no. It was all about the consultants fighting. Oh. They threw this one newbie under the bus. They uh -huh. fired her at the end of the season. So it was it drama was more than dress. Horrible. Okay. It was horrible. And I'm like, oh my and God. And this is 2006, seven? Seven, yeah. Okay. 2007. And I said, this is never. Oh, oh, so, yeah, yeah. So I said, this is never coming back. Mm. I said, they're not going to renew this. Yeah. Well, they did. And then they asked me to be on it. They wanted a guy on the show. And uh -huh. I said, no, 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 no. I don't even watch. You said no? I said, I don't even watch fucking reality TV. I said, there's no way I'm doing this. So but I you're said, such no. a ham. You love the stage. But I I, I just didn't. I, reality TV, I just thought was so cheesy. And you didn't like the way the show was being made. It was. I saw the first season. I'm like, this is awful. You I don't want, want, to, yeah, I don't want any part of it. Yeah. So one day I'm running through the salon and they're in the back filming this bride. This is how I got on the show. You, this is a good, this is yeah. a good story. You're going to like Tell this. Tell us. This Tune is true. in. Focus. Here we go. This is good. This is true. <laughs> so there's a bride and she was maybe like four foot 11, okay. probably like a size 18, yep. huge bust, fuller midsection, yep. fuller in the back, petite. Yep. The gown was open like this big in the back with the rubber bands and the sure. clips. And they had her on the pedestal in a sweetheart cut mermaid Pink and green. Because it's what she wanted pink and or green. because of TV or because? What she wanted, I guess. Okay. Tool at the bottom and pink wow. and green flowers shooting out wow. the back. Wow. And I'm just walking by and there's the managers and consultants and everybody working and filming and film crew. Yeah. And I wasn't really paying attention. And the, the producer of the show came to me and they said, you cannot tell me that you're a good fashion director if you're going to let that girl walk out in that dress. I said, well, what do you want me to do? She goes, your job. She said, I've seen you. This is what you've done your whole life. Yeah. I said, okay, I can do this. She said, come to the back. We're going to mic you up. You're going to go in the stock room. Tell us why you're pulling these dresses, why they're better for her and body. And do what you're doing. And take, yeah. So they went, did that. I went to the stock room, pulled the dresses. I go to the door, knock on it. The door opens. There's the bride. I said, hi, my name's Rainy Finoli. I'm the fashion director. And I brought you some dresses. Mm. And there's the manager and the consultant and the yeah. cameras in my face. And then she goes, what do you mean? You don't like this dress on me? And I said, well, I just think for your body type, these might be a little more flattering. Yeah. So why don't I leave, leave them on the rack just and try, you can try them on? Yeah. Shut the door. I'm nervous for you. They pulled me in the back <laughs> for an interview. Uh-huh. And that was really about that. By the time we finished the interview, I don't know. I was working with 26 other consultants. Yeah, you were busy. I wasn't paying attention. So I said, okay, I can do this. So I finished filming season two and they yeah. got me in all these episodes. So the premiere of season two, my, epi that moment. my episode, you've got the trailer yeah. every 
commercial break. Here's Sarah, who I work with, best friends. I went to her wedding. She's one of the consultants. She goes, what do I do? Tell Randy to shut up. She can't. You what can't, do I do? Tell yeah. Randy to shut up. And I'm like, what is she talking about? Like, this is Sarah. Like, my friend, what did I do? I, yeah, you know, like, they don't let us see the episodes for the air. And I'm like, what did I do? Well, while I was getting mic'd up and bring getting the dresses, she said yes to that dress. They all cried. Tissues were passed around. They cheered. They brought her in the room. She'd already said yes. Yeah. So when the you door, had no idea. When the door opened, there was a manager standing. There, uh, managers don't go in the room unless they're writing up the order and taking measurements. Oh, no. But I wasn't thinking because there's a camera and lights in yeah. my face. So I didn't know any of this was going on. Oh, no. They and set I, you up. Big time. Wow. And I started bawling. This show's on in 150 countries. Yeah. And they just made a fool. I would never. No. Hurt a bride's dreams. No, never. So I started bawling and I called my friend in Orlando and we talked till midnight. And then she goes, Randy, I got my kids to get up in the morning. You got to do <laughs> I gotta something go. else. So I called my friend in Hawaii. Uh-huh. Six hour time difference. Yeah. And was up the entire night till six o'clock in the morning talking to her. And I said, I don't know what to do. I said, yeah. I, I guess I have to go in because I, I got to get out of debt from Katrina and I got to pay the bills. And so it was a Saturday. There were like mm. 93 appointments on the book. And, and I crawled in and I was hiding in my little office. I had a little curtain to my office. Yep. And I'm hiding, praying to God nobody will see me. Sure. All of a sudden, this hand comes through the curtains and grabs my arm and yanks me out. She said, I saw you on the show last night. You're the only one here that has taste. That girl had no business being in that dress. <laughs> she goes, and you're obviously not out to make a sale because the dresses you brought in were less expensive. Could you come take a look at my daughter? No. And she starts dragging me no. through the salon. And apparently, this was Saturday because it wow. used to be Friday Bride Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone had watched the show the night before, apparently. Yeah. And they're like, there's Randy. Oh, my God, there's Randy. There's a fat. Let's get him. He, he, because they knew, they saw the episode. They sure. knew that girl looked yes. a wreck in Everyone that. Everyone was way, on the same page. She ended up in that dress. She got married in that dress. The so one, I feel the original bad for one. Her. Yeah. Wow. But anyway, I feel bad because I, you know. But anyway, I went from what I thought was the worst night of my entire life. Yeah. The next day, every single person knew my name and I was yeah. the star of the show. Wow. So that's how that became. And that's 2007. Yeah. And I, I show, think it was probably 2008, 2008 that it aired. At that yeah, point. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now, so that show was on 17, 18 seasons? Oh, we, well, seasons, because sometimes we do two seasons a year. So I think we're up to about season 28. Wow. We still have six episodes that have not yet aired. Wow. The rumor is, don't get me in trouble with this, it's, but the network will, but um, I, the rumor is they're supposed to air in January. Okay. But we filmed them like two years ago, so I, my hair You're like, I don't even, even know what was happening. I, I look totally different. You were a different human Dressed two years different. ago. Yeah. So um, hopefully they're going to air in January. Okay. Because um, everybody's begging for more episodes, yeah. you know. It's like crap. And, and, People love and it. And I have to say, I always say I hated reality TV and, um, and you know, but I've really come to love our show. Mm. And I tell you why, you know, I think one of the greatest shows in the world on the planet was The Golden Girls. I mean, of course, it's iconic. And, and, and you can't compare our show to The Golden Girls, but The Golden Girls took on really heavy subjects yep. like teenage pregnancy yep. and getting old and dementia and just all kinds of really deep subjects. Yeah. But you laugh the whole way through. A hundred percent. And you could identify with one of the characters. Our show... We take on a lot of deep subjects, like a girl that lost her leg in the Boston bombing or mm. a girl that her father got struck by lightning and, and he may not be able to walk her down the aisle. He mm. may not survive or a girl that lost her hair. Yeah. You know, she's been bald her whole life. And But at the end of every episode, we always have a beautiful couple getting married. Mm. So there's always this happy ending and there's this yeah. hope. At the end. So I really think that's why people watch it because you know that there's that payoff at the yep. end where you're going to feel good at the end of every yeah. episode. It's not going to leave you hanging, sure. whatever. It's So I really think that the show brings people hope. Yeah. And I, that's what I love about it. I, yeah. And I really am proud of the show. I mean, it's been one of the longest running shows. It, I, I think it is the longest running series in TLC history. And it put one Kleinfeld of the on the map in a m massive way, put yourself you know, on the map. I mean, like built a career for you. I'm sure you couldn't even I, I, have imagined. Well, kind of, because I, <laughs> I thought I was going to be president, okay? Knew. I thought well, I was going to be president. Can. You I, still can. Well, apparently, <laughs> up till I'm 80, I got yeah, a yeah. few more layers left in me. But, um, you know, I, um, I've um, i given that up because I would I would take me at least, you know, I would you take me at least. You had political aspirations. I, 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 I just, I will say this. Our, my parents, they were the type to say, you can be anything you want to yep. be. Yeah. Just work hard, focus on it, and, and do, do it. it. Yeah. They, they. As I said, they were not farmers. Yeah. My mother 
God, she was genius. My mother back in the 60s and 70s was talking about the polar ice caps melting. Wow. In the 60s my, and 70s. My yeah. country neighbors would come home and she was talking about all this. They thought she was wacky. Uh-huh. Yeah. And she was a genius woman. Mm. They really were smart. My, my father spoke like six languages yeah. or whatever. He's very high up in the military. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. So, you know, yeah. So does that voice go away or you still have like a political? Oh, I love politics. Yeah. I love, po- we don't, won't talk about them today. It's not the point I of our get, show. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but I love, Got it. I, and I love news. I like, I like to be informed. Yeah. I want to be intelligent. I don't yeah. want to say, oh, I'm just bridal, just bridal. Just, I want to know what's going on in the world. I want to know, you know, back in FIT, my, this is some of my favorite times because my best friend in the whole world to this day, every weekend she had a party at her place on the Upper East Side, um, like second and 72nd and uh-huh. first, whatever, not yeah, yeah. Upper not East Side. Upper, upper. No, it was a, it was a dump. <laughs> but the anyway, border. We had fun, but <laughs> we had, okay, like my friend, um, Vikash was from India. We had Dovi from Israel. We had Sasha from Russia. We had Nula from um, um, Ireland. Yeah. We had Emma from England. We had Consuelo from Italy. Like every single person, Nazi was from Iran. Every single person there every was from of life. a different um, country and different ethnicity and different religion. And we would just, you know, get drunk and party and talk and just delve into yeah. each other's um, religions and backgrounds and everything. And it was such a period of my life where I just had this growth of spirituality. Yeah, you learned a lot. And, and just acceptance of the world and just realize, you know, we, we like to think, oh, we're American, we speak English and we're this religion and we're right. We're not. Mm. We're just one of a lot. One of a lot. And 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 you go to any place else and you need to respect their religion and their yeah. beliefs and, and try to like understand it. But when you do go around, really, we all kind of believe the same thing. Mm. And, and we, we all, all want the same we thing. We just want love. We want family. We want our friends. We want to be able to afford food and a roof over our head yeah. and provide. We all want the same thing. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's true. We're we all human want beings. the same thing. We're just people. Yeah. People. The way we get it is sometimes different. People, people who, need who need people. people. <laughs> and we do. We need each other on this planet. 100%. Yeah. So say yes to the dress. Has that come? Is it over? Is it paused? What's the story? No, I, well, since... TLC, I'm sorry, Discovery and Warner Brothers merged. Yep. That was a huge, two huge conglomerates coming together. They're kind of shifting things around and trying to refigure programming. So right now, I think that's why the episodes haven't aired yet because they're trying to figure Got out it. where we where place they're going to go. I just think there's a lot TV. of moving parts. Yeah, you know. So well, I, TV's I, changing as a whole, the industry. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if it's going to continue or not. We'll have to see. Okay, leaving. But that. I think I think there's always going to be a, and I get all the time people wanting, you know, saying, "When do we get more episodes?" So I think there is a need for it, and especially overseas. Yeah. Oh my God. People go love to, it. When I go, I go to the Netherlands and Italy and South Africa, and I mean, the people Taiwan. People wow. come out in droves, like more than here in the states. It, 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 like in Italy, I, I had to get eight of my reps to surround me just to get me out to a taxi. Literally, they had to like oh open the door God. and shove me in and. <laughs> Close it because it was like because they love you. It was like they Beyonce or Taylor Swift. It was wow. wild. Wow, I don't understand it. And you I don't, weren't expecting that at all. I don't want to understand it. Yeah, I don't want to understand. I feel very uncomfortable when people say, "Oh, you're a celebrity. You're a star." You know what? I'm Randy. You're Randy. I'm very blessed. I'm very lucky to have a platform which allows me to raise money. I, mm. I belong to at least at least thirty chari- mm. charities. I've had three Make a Wish girls. Mm. Um, I'm still in touch with one of them. The other one passed away. Mm. It's a whole other sad story. Um, we I had to make her dress for her to be buried in. Um, that was one of the hardest things mm. I ever did. Wow. Um, we made it in like, with the help of Kleinfeld, we actually made it in like a week because I didn't know how long she was sure. going to live. But that was her wish. That was her wish. And wow. I went there and, and, and to Milwaukee and we I sat in her ho- hospital room beside her bed and we sketched it and we had a great time. And, mm. and, and she'll we, never forget that. And I'll never forget putting... Putting that dress in a FedEx box mm. and sending it to a 15-year-old girl to be bar- buried in, that was one of the hardest things I ever had to do. Mm. But I also got to raise money for Make-A-Wish, and I think um, we raised, I raised 275000 one year. Wow. So I love charities. Yeah. I love that I have a platform because I. why else would you want fame? Other than to help. It's, it's not easy. Mm. It's, I can't go to the grocery store. I I can't go anywhere. Yeah. Somebody's going to ask for a photo. Somebody and if wants I'm not, something from you. And, and especially if you're in a hurry, you you have to plan everything. That's why I'm always early. Yeah. <laughs> because if I'm walking around, someone's always going to stop me and say, can I get a picture? And, and you have to you stop. You have to plan for that. And 
you know, these are the people that support me and you have to be kind to them yeah. and take that photo and yeah. sh- and listen to them and hug them yeah. and shake their hands. Yeah. Connect. They want that. And those that one minute you give them or whatever time you give them, the rest of their lives. They're going to remember that. They're going to, every time they're in a circle of people and they're going, yeah. oh, I met this celebrity. I met that celebrity. They're going to tell that story. Oh, I met him and he was so nice. He stopped. He grabbed my camera. He did a selfie yep. with me. He was just like he is on TV. Like they appreciate that. Yeah. And I've met some that aren't so nice. They're like, yeah. no photos. Yeah. I'm sorry. And yeah. I'm like, these are the people that they're the reason you are here. Yeah. yeah. The reason you have a show. The reason you are famous is because Correct. these people support you. Correct. So it's it's so sometimes I just stay at home. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm not up for it. If you're not in the mood. My groceries, I'll have them delivered. Yep. I'll have, you know, whatever delivered. Because you can't to. always be happy, it's Randy. It's hard to be it's on all the time. Always, it's hard. So. And if I walk out the door, I'm on. Yeah. And you have to be. And they're like, well, just put a baseball hat on uh, sunglasses. Wait, you I don't would love to see, to see you. You don't. You will not. <laughs> it's the, I look so I just got a ridiculous. Visual. I just got oh, it's a bad. visual. I will not wear a baseball hat. Sunglasses, it, I look a like a little cap, boy hat. And a t-shirt. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. And then it doesn't even I'm work. I'm going to AI. I'm going to make they, this on AI and, and send it to you. And then they then they recognize my voice. So it doesn't work anyway. It doesn't work. You know? So they're I recognize that voice. Aren't you from? I'm upset. Planning a wedding can be stressful, but Generation Tux understands. They've designed a suit and tuxedo rental process that you can complete entirely from home. It's easy, convenient, and stress-free. Forget about store visits, last-minute pickups, and ill-fitting suits. With Generation Tux, you'll choose from over 25 premium wool suits and tuxedos, customizable with hundreds of accessories and colors. Plus, you'll get free shipping and delivery 14 days before your wedding. Free replacements, prepaid returns, and amazing customer service. Visit GenerationTux.com for the perfect suit or tuxedo delivered straight to your door. I have a couple of questions if you have a few more minutes. I love questions. I know, I'm sure. I love real questions questions from people. They're the best. So this question is from Emily Baird. Emily, thank you for and your question. she said she's obsessed with you, number one. <laughs> and you. number two, your favorite silhouette, if you could only pick one. Oh, I can't. <laughs> I can't. No, you can't? You know, no, no, no. Because it, it really depends on on the bride. Okay. Um, I mean, for a bride that wants, you know, to be a princess, honey, give me a ball gown. Yeah. You know, for a bride that wants to be sexy, give me a fitted mermaid. Uh-huh. You know, I, I really can't pick a favorite silhouette. Probably my, I would say probably my least favorite okay. would be kind of, and and not that they're bad. I should, oh, I've got to be careful. No, you're least, but, you're allowed to have preferences. But, okay. But I, I'm not, a, when a bride comes in and says, I, I want an A-line. Mm. Generally they say that because they don't like their body and they think an A-line is, is a shape that would just cover That's flattering. all things that they don't like. Sure. And it, it really, you know what? I can get you in a dress and make you look good no matter what size yeah. or shape you yeah. are. And I love my curvy girls. And, you know, I get beat up a lot of times. Uh, not beat up. Like, by the way, there's my fans, they're diehard on yeah. social media. They love you. I am so blessed. I mean, do you have any negative comments I've read on my social media? I'm sure. Like two in my I'm lifetime. Sure. Oh. Like li- literally. That's it. There's And if somebody put something negative, like the most negative thing they, I they ever heard, it. somebody put, he's so gay. And somebody right beneath it, beneath it said, duh. <laughs> <laughs> and I laugh so hard. Like I don't take him down. And I'm like, well, thank you for thinking that. But I am, you know, yeah. like, like I that really. That is a fact. And I do respond <laughs> on social media. Like if you see me respond, sometimes it's just emojis. Sure. But I do try to read them and look at them. And, you and, manage and your account by yourself? My account. I manage wow. 100% by myself. Okay, that's I do a, a lot, lot of, of reposting of stuff. Yep. And then I have Rainy Finley Bride, okay. which somebody manages that for me. Sure. And um, I oversee it, whatever. But um, no, I go on there. But um, it, it's, yeah, I have really, really great fans. And they, they're they really nice and kind to me. They yeah. really are. I'm so, so blessed. Yeah. I mean, what celebrity doesn't have like haters? Sure. I'm I mean, really the lucky. thing is, is they find controversy. They find a reason to be angry, but they that's find a reason amazing. To hate, so I'm really lucky. Well, really but you're lucky. also a good seed. Lucky. But it, sometimes there's good seeds and they're just, I don't know why. Yeah. I've just been really, but I really truly do love people yeah. and I am genuine. And what you see is what, what you, you get. get. No, a hundred percent. I, it's true. I can attest to that. <laughs> Who is one person that has changed your life, but doesn't know it? Oh gosh. Um, well, oh, doesn't know it. Well, they all know it because I always tell them. Yeah. Um, I, I went back 
and went to my high school teachers. I went to their homes, visited them at home. This one had cancer and I helped her with her wigs and we sat down and I said, she was my speech teacher. And I said, Aww. thank you for putting me up in front of that class. And she was brutal on me. Sure. She would throw me up in front of that class and say, Mr. Finnell, you're from the North and tell us what you eat up there. Cause they had something down on a thing, P dot cheese sandwiches. And I'm like, what is that? I don't know what that pimento is. Pimento yeah. cheese. It's a Southern oh, thing. Oh, pimento. I didn't okay. know what it was. And the whole kid started laughing at me. She goes, Mr. Finnell, get up and tell us what you eat from Illinois. She would push me. Yeah. And all these teachers, and I went back and was able to um, thank my biology teacher. He gave me this book called The Magic of Thinking Big. Mm. I went back to every teacher at FIT. That had impacted and if, you. And, and I'm still friends with them. Wow. I'm still best friends. Linda yeah. Tain, who got me into FIT, who made sure I had all the right teachers, and 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 was the one that got me in that contest. Yeah. I'm, I, I went to her um, ret- semi-retirement and spoke, and, and she's still my dear friend I this day. I love that. And, and yeah. So you say it out loud. So yeah, a, a few people that I, I still aspire to meet and do influence me. Probably two that I would say, um, actually three now, but I would say top of the list would be Dolly Parton. Mm -hmm. I think if there ever were an angel on this planet, I think she would be at the top of the list. Oprah Winfrey. Have you made a dress for her? I wish I could. I feel like that I has to I happen. Could. I haven't even thought about that. I Because I just want to meet her and talk to her. I just but wanna, I feel like energetically you know, your design and Dolly. I would, I love her and so And obviously much. you'd have I to meet her. I saw her once in the airport. She was on the little cart riding by and she was waving at everybody. <laughs> and um, and, and uh, Oprah, of course, I've met Oprah a couple yeah. times and she was so lovely to me. Mm-hmm. And um, and um, I would probably say Taylor Swift now, just not that she's really influenced me so much, but I admire, I admire strong, yep. smart women. Yep. I really do. And yeah. I think one of the things about women is they stereotype them as, mm. oh, you have to be, if you're a strong woman, they then you're a, a bitch. Box. Yep. Okay. And if you're a smart woman or if you this, well, you know, you did that because you're a woman and they, sure. they did it just, you know, because they had to fill that place or whatever. I'm sorry. I think a woman needs to run this country. 100%. Look at New Zealand. Yes. She was pregnant and had a baby and a family and cleaned that country up. She did yeah. a great job. Yeah. You know, I, I love strong women and they can multitask and yeah. they can think. And I think they're a little less, um, I think men are a little hot tempered, more hot tempered, yeah. generally speaking. And I think that they're less to pull the trigger and, <laughs> and sit back a minute and say, okay, let's look at Take both it sides. All in. Yep. And I think they're just a little bit more in the middle. And I, I think women have a little more finesse about mm. situations. And I, I would love a woman president someday. Yeah. I really would. Well, I'm with you. Yeah. Um, we have one more question. If you could time travel to any period throughout history, oh. when would you pick and why? Oh, gosh, there's so many. Um, well, the only thing I wish I had done that I missed out was the Studio 54. Oh, <laughs> a yeah. few years, I was a few uh-huh. years late for that. Yeah. I would love to have been a part of that. I'm sure. But, um, you know, um, I, I think the 50s had really cool fashion. Like, that's probably my favorite fashion, a decade of fashion was, you know, the, the wasp waist and the, and you know, I love making women in that beautiful that hourglass cinched, yep. figure. Yeah. I love that. But, um, but then there's all these periods of time that I think are so even like Egyptian times, imagine living back then. Yeah. I mean, you know? wild, literally. And, and what I also find fascinating is, is the whole thing about makeup and they talk about, Oh, you know, cause I wear makeup for the show and whatnot. And like, Oh, you wear makeup. You're a guy. Yeah. Well, for, Thousands of years, Egyptian men, men wore makeup. And During wigs. the whole Victorian period, yes. they wore wigs and makeup. And, and heels. And heels and everything else. And rhinestone buckles and all, all of kinds it. of stuff. All and of it. And now it's like, oh, yeah, you wear makeup, you're a sissy. You know what? Who cares? Yeah. If yeah. you're really that concerned about what I do with my life, you need to really focus a little bit more on yours. On your own. You know, 100%. Like, just let's let each other people live. Like let live people and let live, live. Let people be happy you know, and just, let people be As long be as they're they not are. harming anyone, does it really matter what no, they're doing? It doesn't. Yeah, just in, let love people and be a little, be a little kinder to yeah. one another. Because, you know, if everybody it just was a little kinder, yeah. you know, um, we, we just, if we loved a little more, yeah, you the know, world would be a much better be a place. Much better place. And, and I remember at, at, on stage interview at Miss America, I said, in order to change nations, governments, and worlds, we first have to change individuals, mm. starting with yourself. Yeah. And I think if, like, you have people like Dolly and Oprah and whatever, they set an example, and Taylor Swift that set an example, and Beyonce that set yeah. an example for other people. And um, I think we, especially when you're famous, or in the spotlight. Everyone's watching, yeah. And I think you need to take that responsibility seriously because mm. people look up to you. Yep. And you can change the world. Yeah. 
by just setting an example. Because people come to me and they say, I got into fashion because of you, or mm-hmm. I got into bridal because of you, or, you know, I, I did this, you know, and I'm like, so they're watching yeah. everything I do. It's it's scary sometimes the pe- things people tell me about myself that I'm like, how did you know that? <laughs> like they, I've got some stalkers out yeah, there. I'm sure you do. They're loving. Yeah. They mean well. They really do. But it can so be. It's, it's, I, I've got a woman in, in um, 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 Hungary and she's a grandmother and um, it, it, not so much anymore, but she would bring, when I go to the, uh, do appearances in the Netherlands, she would fly in and bring me gifts. She didn't speak a word of English. Just she would bring, bring me you gifts. gifts. And every time I post on social media, she's the first one and, and pers- first person to respond and send me hearts. And I love you, Randy, and this and wow. that. And I'm like, this is a little weird. She's all in. But, but I've got, yeah. So it's a, you know, it's yeah. fine line. I think if you're all in on love at the end of the day, yeah. that's but it. But they all mean well. Of course. Yeah. That's I've it. I've never had a hater really ever. Which is which amazing. Is nice. As I said, I'm very blessed. Well, this has been so much fun. Thank, Thank you, you so much for sharing your life and opening up. And Thank you for having of me. Of course. Really, I've been wanting to do this for a long time, you know. And I'm I, and so I, happy. You know, my schedule is so crazy. Literally the busiest person yeah. I know. I'm flying to Belgium tomorrow <laughs> and then know. I go to the Netherlands and then back home. I don't even, so, sometimes I have to go to my you hotel don't even know where room you are. window and open the curtains. Uh, I did that once. I yeah. had to, See what city see I was where in. You were. <laughs> Open your phone. Open your, your location where settings. Am I? Yeah. Where in the world is Randy? <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much. And thank where you. can people find you? Oh yes, um, everything is just Randy Finoli, R A N D Y F E N O L I at dot com. Randy Finoli on Instagram. I don't really use Twitter that much anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't do TikTok because I've heard some bad things about it in China. So I don't <laughs> do that. I do have a TikTok account, but I. Somebody else manages Someone that. Else manages I don't it. have That's it on my you. phone. But um, yeah, everything is just Randy Finoli because I'm my grandparents were it was Finolio. 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 And when oh. they came over, they dropped the G and they dropped the O. Oh. And no, respecting Italians can name their kid Randy. Yeah. So I'm the only Randy Finoli on the planet, basically. Wow, you're the only one. Yeah. It's so kind of worked out everything's, perfectly. Yeah, Randy Finoli. And then before we go, last thing is the cruise. Can are you what's oh. going on with Princess? So I have this lovely relationship with Princess Cruise yeah. Lines. I love them and they're a wonderful company to work with, as is Discovery. And and I, I'm really lucky. I don't work if I don't want to work with somebody, if I don't you feel won't. good, I won't. And so my mom, like, you know what? I, I you know, contract whatever. Yeah. If I don't feel good about it, I'm not gonna do it. Yep. I have to have that relationship, but they're really a great company and they've they've given me a title of their love and romance ambassador. Ooh la la and Randy. I, I hosted a cruise in November and was able to give speeches and meet and greets with so people. So people and, that come on the cruise get to meet you. Yeah get to meet me and hang out with wow. me and they had a cocktail named after me. It was a grapefruit martini with some gold dust sprinkled in it. And Very chic. Fabulous. Yeah. And yeah d- they could dine with me at night. They had dine, oh my you gosh. Know, and it was a lot of fun. It sounds and like so it. So I'm just so blessed to you know have them and um I'm, I'm, yeah, I love. Do you have princess. another cruise coming up? I, I do. I, I'm, I'm not a hosted one, but um, they they give me a few, you know, as a bonus. They're really just lovely, and and we're going to be doing something. I think in October, I'm doing another appearance. I just did an appearance for them in Barcelona. We launched um, the Sky Princess, their newest ship. Oh, fun! And I was in Barcelona showing my collection, and then okay. the day after, you know, you down the runway, and then ship. the day after they were there, and I said, I'll just stay an extra day. And, yeah, why not? And they said, we'll send a car service and a hotel, and we'll do I it. I love it. So they're just wonderful to work with. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And be well. Thank you. And now it's time for Ask Jove, where I answer your questions. Really, anything you want to know, go ahead and ask. I couldn't be more excited to be joined in studio with my dear friend, Sloan, for Ask Ask Jove. Jove. Today's question is from Ethan from Seattle. We're considering a surprise wedding during our engagement party. Mm. 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 But we're unsure if it's a good idea. Okay, Ethan. What are the pros and cons of planning a surprise wedding? You know, I love surprises. I think they're super fun. I think there's a a thing happening in weddings where couples are trying to like outdo one another, outwedding the wedding. And one way to do that is a surprise wedding. I think this question is great because what are the pros? What are the cons? Get all the information and then make a decision. So the pros is that it's super fun. It's super thrilling. It's super exciting. I think you can feel a lot less pressure Mm -hmm. because you're not planning a wedding. So you're not going to get all this unsolicited advice for months or years. And the decision timeline is shorter. Much shorter. Mm -hmm. And so all of that is really great. You can have a more casual party. You can really have fun with it in a way that you sometimes is diminished when it's a wedding for whatever reason. I don't think that's Mm -hmm. true, but I think societally... That's what happens. So I see the lure of wanting to do it. I think the cons 
we had a surprise wedding. Sure did. And uh, I thought it was a really fun idea. The biggest con for this couple was her best friend couldn't make it. Mm. So in order for it to be a surprise, you really can't tell anyone. anyone. Obviously the parents who are paying the hosts, but no one else can know. So her best friend thought it was the engagement party and literally said, I'm so bummed to miss it. I have to work, but I can't wait for the wedding. So with the lowered expectation of an engagement party, the, the societal pressure to attend is also lower. Mm -hmm. Like it's not as important of a life event. So sometimes work or family might take priority because they're going to save the date for the wedding. Especially if they have to travel. Especially if they have mm -hmm. to travel. And for this particular couple, they were, the party was in New York, but a lot of people were traveling. And so I think that's a really good point for a pro and a con. Mm -hmm. If most of your friends are local and the party's local, the odds are they're probably going to come mm -hmm. and you give them enough notice. But if they're flying, getting hotels... You start to look at your life in your summer and like, you know, I have this many weddings already in the book. I have a family vacation. I have a work trip. Like, do I need to go to the engagement right. party? Sometimes people have done like a big 40th birthday, 30th birthday. Like, you know, there are other guises that people use. Mm -hmm. But I just think there's nothing bigger in one's life in terms of a party than their wedding. So that's the con. And it really, this bride was devastated. I mean, understandably so, like her right. best friend wasn't there. And then when she found out and her friend kind of texted her more casually, like appropriate for the situation. Right. But when she found out, she said, oh my God, it's my wedding. You have to come. And she's like, I can't. Oh no. Like she couldn't, it's like she had already committed to work because she didn't know. So I just think like, is that worth it for you? And if one or two people aren't able to come, is that going to be okay? Yeah. And the other thing no one talks about is the dress code. Because usually mm. for like an engagement party. It's more casual. It's more casual. And so people definitely showed up in jeans. Yes. <laughs> and uh, this person was angry. This bride was not happy because it's her wedding. But no one knew that it was mm -hmm. her wedding. And you, you don't want to give too many clues. Right. Like a black tie engagement party feels... That's not going to be it. <laughs> wrong. You know what I mean? And so I think you just want to walk through like all of the things that could happen. And I love a list, a pro list, a con list. I think the other thing is how the surprise happens, mm. right? So is it right when they walk in the room and they see a ceremony or do they walk in and it is actually an engagement party and then it's a pop-up ceremony? Right. Like, right. do you as the couple want to be there for the moment of reveal mm -hmm. or do you not? Do you want to walk into your ceremony? Do you want to walk into your ceremony and everyone's like, you know, right? you have to walk through all of that. And even like photo, video, stationary, like you still have all the components. So I don't know that it's like a cost savings. Mm -hmm. I guess you wouldn't send a save the date and an invitation for an engagement party. You right. would just send, you know, an invitation. But yeah, that's, that really stuck with me because I felt so bad for her. Like I'm planning my wedding and if my best friend couldn't make it, I would secretly feel like should my we alter fault? things? <laughs> yeah, or should we alter things yeah. for sure? So I think those are the pros and cons. Would you ever go back and have an enge uh, an engagement party surprise wedding? No, no, no. I think it's like look at your pros and cons, but then also put that against what your priorities are. Right? For us, it was a really big priority to have some of our more elderly family members there. Yes. And there's a lot of planning and logistics that come into that. To get them to be there. Yeah, exactly. Safely like and... My great-grandmother was 91 when we got married. Wow. And the How photos special. of her are my favorite photos from our entire wedding. Yeah. Like, it is, it is incredible to have people who have been in your life since you were born and who play pivotal parts in your life. Yep. So that was a big priority for us. Yeah. So no, would not be surprised. Would not. <laughs> I mean, she could have had a heart attack. I mean, listen. <laughs> could you imagine granny in the walker? Like, what? We could have done like a surprise going down to visit her sure. and like a little ceremony there, but no, we wanted, been the same. we wanted the party. You wanted, we wanted what her you wanted. there. We wanted it to feel festive and yeah. fun. And so. And I also think Granny probably would have worn, I don't know, I'm obsessed with your grandma. I'm perfect. I love grandma. I mean, Shirley's amazing. Wait, so. my grandma's name is Shirley. Really? 
And she's How from do we Texas. not know this? <laughs> you have a grandma Shirley? I have a grandma Shirley, my great grandma, my mama. My grandma Shirley. Mm. Wow. And she's from Texas, from Galveston. Oh. Yes. She's a Southern grandma. We love that. Um, but I think she would be upset if she came to my surprise wedding because she would be like, I wouldn't wear this. Oh, absolutely. If, if I knew this was your wedding, I would have worn something different. Mm -hmm. So there's like a generational thing. And I mm -hmm. think people, yeah, it's just, it's just different. And then another thing on the con list is you can't really have a whole weekend of events. Right. Because people because, are like, why? Yeah, you can't invite someone to your pre-party for your engagement party right. or your post-engagement party brunch. So if you want a full weekend, not a good idea. But on the flip side, if you're trying to save money and just have one event. There you go. There you go. You can't have other events. So like mm -hmm. it's a nice way to kind of get around it. But then are you doing hotel blocks for your engagement party? Are you providing transportation for your right. engagement party? Like, Is that on your pros or your cons list? Yeah. Like, less logistics planning. Is that a pro or a con? Yeah. Right. And only, Who's you know, based on what you want to do. But I just for me, like I, I, f I feel so bad for that best friend and I just mm -hmm. can't get that out of my head. So, yes, yeah, surprise us. Let us know what happens. Ooh, good luck, Ethan. Good luck. <laughs> well, that's it for today. And wasn't that fun? Don't forget to send your questions. Again, any questions, send them our way to hi at jovemeyer.com and maybe I will answer them on air. If you can, send a voice memo. I love to hear your voice. Weddings-ish! Thank you again for listening or watching Weddings-ish with Jove. This episode is brought to you by Generation Tux, the perfect suit or tuxedo delivered straight to your door. GenerationTux.com. If you like today's episode, please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. We're also super grateful to Mel Flannery for the music on the podcast. She created, produced, and designed all of the music. And don't forget, you can watch Weddings-ish with Jove on Love Stories TV, YouTube, or streaming TV channel. Visit lovestoriestv.com slash live for the list of streaming apps. Weddings-ish. Weddings-ish.